Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. This is our very first Tuesday Talk. I'm not sure how Tuesday Talks are going to go or how often we're going to do them. If we'll do them every other week, every week, once a month. Or if maybe this will be our very last Tuesday talk. But several of y'all um, were very enthusiastic about doing this. So we're going to see how it goes and pray about it and just kind of play it by ear. I do think it's something, though, that could add to the channel and um, add to the way people enjoy it and interact. And I think it's something that we can bring a lot more information into the channel. Um, so we're going to try it for a while, I think. Like I said, it's something we're going to pray about. And I have been praying about this talk all week long, ever since the idea kind of hit me. And at this point, I don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm not... I just am not sure how this is going to go. So we're just going to talk for a few minutes. I do want to kind of tell you how I've been doing, what I've been doing. Um, I hope in this episode, uh, some of you who are dealing with the same situation that I'm dealing with, or maybe you have lost someone other than your spouse, you can find some comfort in it. Maybe in knowing that you're not the only one going through it. Maybe you can find some hope that, you know, the main thing that I want to share about losing someone you love and how you deal with life after death, which is what this is about. It's not about what's happened to your loved one. It's about what's happening to you, your life after you have a death. And that's kind of what I want to focus on. And my main experience with that, of course, is my life after the death of Brett. It's been five weeks now, and there is still so much going on. And all of you have um, posted scriptures in messages. You've sent me emails. You've done comments. I mean, I am so blessed to have so many people in my life. They're all this mail here. Um, I have probably cards and letters from every state in the Union and from several other countries, which is just unreal. Uh, Brett would have been absolutely overwhelmed by the love and support and the kindness and the prayers that people, uh, people all around the world, all across the United States, like I said, and probably from every state now, I think I have cards and several different countries. And he was, because he was in the background, I don't think he understood how much he was appreciated or how much he was going to be missed. Um, you know, just because you're not that person out in front does not mean you're not that, per you're not important. And he was certainly important, not just to me, but to a lot of other people too. And his life made such a difference. Um, and all the verses that I've read and all the verses that you've sent, the one that kind of stands out the most to me is John eleven twenty five, And it's Jesus' words. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And I know and most of you who are Christians, you know, you have that hope, that belief, that knowledge that this is only temporary. And, and I also know that even though it is only temporary, there are moments when it feels so permanent and so that gap between you and that person who has died is so great that it's it just overcomes you. And I, I understand that completely. Um, I talked to my mother-in-law earlier because 
she was widowed 11 years ago, over 11 years ago. And then, of course, she lost her son. And I kind of, I was hoping that she had something significant to add to it. And her main thing was make sure you have people in your life. Don't be alone. And I know there are so many of you who have lost half of you. You've lost your spouse. And now you don't have other people in your life. And right now, it's very hard to have a church family still because so many churches either are holding limited services or they're um, not holding services at all except online. And I know a lot of people aren't able to get out and go to church. And I can't imagine how hard that would be. And for those of you who can't get to a church for some reason or you can't, your family's not around you, I want to tell you again, reach out to an online community. There are multiple Facebook groups, and I know people go back and forth over Facebooks, but there are a lot of groups on Facebook that you can join and be a part of that online community. You can be a part of the Hillbilly Kitchen on YouTube or on Facebook. We're both places. Um, And to to know that people are praying for you, even if you don't have that physical contact, If you have the contact online and you have people who are reaching out to you and and they are praying for you, it will make a difference in your life. And certainly the physical, the face-to-face contact, that's, we all desire that, we all need that. That's how God made us. He did not make us to be alone. So, you know, I, I want to encourage you to form those relationships, make friends, small groups but if you can't get out do it online because that is a it's a gift that God has given us and it's a way to reach other people and be with other people without having that physical connection and it's a way that we can be with people from all over the world it doesn't have to just be people who live right next to us it can be people in other countries people in other states and we can still have a connection with them So, um, you know, make sure you're not alone if you're grieving. And if you don't understand eternal life, if you don't understand life after death for the person who has passed, if you don't have that hope in Jesus, please, please reach out to someone who can help you find that. There are hundreds of thousands of online churches that will share the gospel with you. They will give you a counselor online, somebody to message you, maybe even somebody who will call you and talk to you. Um, and you can certainly reach out on the Hillbilly Kitchen. And we, if we don't get back to you, another person who watches the Hillbilly Kitchen, another part of our family from somewhere in the world, will reply to your comment. I read comments all the time and people will go on and they'll read a comment and they will reply to that comment and tell that person that they're praying for them. And if you do something online, it is important if you want to interact with people, like if you come on the Hillbilly Kitchen, make sure you click like and subscribe and then click the notification bell and click all notifications. That way, Anybody who replies to your comment on here, you'll get a notification and you'll know that somebody's trying to have a conversation with you. If you don't click the notification bell and click all notifications and you have to actually scroll down the little menu that'll pop up to all, you won't get those and you'll never know if somebody replies to you. So if you want to be a part of an online community, whether it's here or somewhere else, make sure you do that. And that way you'll get the notifications and you'll know when people are trying to have a conversation with you. Um, I want to kind of talk to you about the things that I felt were necessary right away. Um, This is my to-do list. This is the stuff that I have to do for at home. This is the stuff that I have to do for the Hillbilly Kitchen to kind of keep it going. I have literally in five weeks got to... 
mark off two things and I have added I, I don't even know how many and on the work side I've marked off three things and I continue to add things on there too I would recommend doing a list and then like like I said I'm incredibly blessed Brett left me in a position where I don't have to worry about losing my house I don't have to worry about paying the bills I don't have to worry about finding a job I have a, a job as long as y'all watch <laughs> and so and it's a job that I feel is important and gives me purpose if you don't have purpose in your life you need to find something to give your life purpose maybe it's taking care of a grandchild if you have grandchildren close by or something and it's going to be different depending on our ages too that was one of the things that i really realized when i was talking to my mother-in-law is that we deal with this far different based on our ages um, she was in her 70s when she lost her husband i'm 53 probably barring some accident or some unforeseen illness i have another 40 to 45 years on this earth and that's a long time to think about not having bread in my life so <laughs> i have different things to deal with than she had to deal with but she's been alone a long time i mean she has been alone even though she was in her 70s she has been without her husband for 11 years and now she's facing losing her children so that's you know that's not easy to deal with and like i said we deal with it different at different ages but there are similarities that we all common things we all have to deal with and another one of the things that she and i both had to deal with was brett was our protector he not just for me but for our whole family we knew that he would defend us till his last breath and he did but once he was gone the whole world felt a lot less safe and our home definitely felt less safe and one of the first things she did was she installed a monitored security system well it took me about two weeks and i installed a monitored security system and I, I think especially for women who are widowed feeling safe in your home is a huge deal um, and you need to add as much security as you can possibly afford to add that would be my recommendation and find a company that you can trust um, maybe if someone recommends something to you i shopped for two weeks and just could not find what I was looking for and I finally went with simple safe and I'm telling you that because I know people are going to ask um, and they didn't endorse this in any way I went with simple safe because it was simple um, it's fairly inexpensive monitoring it's $25 a month and there's not anything extra added they do let you try it for 30 days for free if you don't like it you can pack it all up and send it all back and you don't owe them a penny for 30 days um, and you order what you want you they will help you build a security system or you can build it yourself i do want to tell you if you go through them call them because if you call them you can get a much better discount than you can get online um, i did call them the woman was extremely helpful that i talked to and i ordered quite a bit of stuff and i'm probably going to call and add a couple more components because you can put up to 99 components on your one base station and they monitor all of it and there's panic buttons and all kinds of stuff that you can get with it indoor cameras outdoor cameras and that was what i was looking for i was looking for inexpensive monitoring and i wanted to be able to afford to buy the system too and i know there's a lot of places that rent them um, and you know you do what's right for you but that one i felt good with i felt good about the purchase i felt good about the monitoring I've called a few times to talk to them and they answer the phone like that and it's a person not a computer which is you know that's what you need you don't want to call your security company and have to go through a big long menu and then get a computer that says leave a message I mean that's not good uh, so anyway that's enough about the security system I that's what I chose and like I said I know people are going to ask um, and $25 a month to 
be able to get help at, at the push of a button or to know your house is protected when you're not home. You're not going to walk in and somebody be in your house when you get in there. I mean, that to me was well worth the money. So fix it where you feel safe in your home. That that was a huge deal. And that that unsafe feeling didn't happen right away for me. It was like it probably took a week, maybe even longer, but I just... I woke up and I just did not feel safe anymore and I had to do something. And then, like I said, I shopped for a week before I found what I wanted. So if you've got no clue, I recommend them. Um, <sighs> what else? Definitely people in your life. Um, I have three of my children who live close and I have had daily contact with all of them. If I haven't seen them, I've talked to them on the phone at the very least, um, and I have two grandchildren who are close. Charlotte is now at that age where she's the center of attention, and she has been spending loads of time with me the past two weeks, and everywhere she's went, she's taken me with her. Um, we went uh, to a fall festival at two days in a row. And then we went to Gatlinburg for three days. Her daddy had to go to a conference and she's, you know, she really is energetic and it's great. Uh, we stopped by Brett's favorite souvenir shop in Gatlinburg. If y'all are over there, it's a really old little mom and pop type place. And if you're looking for a place to get souvenirs, it's the Gold Golden Eagle Gifts. And as you're going out of town, it's on the right side of the road going out of town um, before you get to the interstate. And I highly recommend it. They have tons and tons and tons of stuff. And it's way cheaper than any place right down in Gatlinburg in town. And they have stuff that says Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, even Cherokee stuff. So if you're looking for gifts from that, that area there, stop it and see those folks at Golden Eagle. They've been in business for forever. Um, they were probably one of the first stores there. I don't know. We've been taking our kids there since they were little. And they always loved it and Charlotte loved it. She found all kinds of stuff in there. And again, that's just something that it's not paid for. They didn't ask for it, but they're nice folks. And we've loved it down for three generations. And the last thing we did is last weekend she was going backpack camping and I was a little leery about that. I haven't been backpacking since I was probably 16 years old and um, it was something that Brett talked about doing for a long time and she said, Granny, you going backpacking with me next weekend? And I don't know. So I did <laughs> and I think Samantha and David were a little concerned too. Like I said, I'm 53 years old and hadn't been backpacking since I was 16, but um, they had never been. So, <laughs> and it was, it was enjoyable. Charlotte and I had fun. We slept together. She went to sleep at 1 a.m., <laughs> which is a little late when you're backpack camping because you got to get up the next day and carry your backpack again. But uh, we had fun. And like I said, she is so energetic. She definitely kept me entertained. And I'm still working on my list. Um, if you have lost someone right now, you're probably dealing with my next problem. It is very hard right now to wrap up all of the paperwork and stuff that you need for your loved one. I still don't have a death certificate five weeks later which means there is still an enormous amount of stuff that I have to do to finish taking care of Brett. And that, I, his monument or his headstone has not been finished yet. I ordered that the day after the service, but they are, all the people who are in that industry, even the people who handle the, the paperwork for the government, they're all just overwhelmed and it's taken longer and longer and longer to get that stuff done. And it, 
I told the kids, you know, that I wanted to get all of his stuff taken care of because I didn't feel like I could even start taking care of all the stuff that I had to take care of until I had him taken care of. And I can't do that because I can't get the paperwork. And I know there are other people who are experiencing that too. And his doctor is being zero help. Of course, he was zero help when Brett was sick. And I'm not even going to get into that because I'll just get angry and uh, we're not going there. We're, we're, I am trying to deal with this all with the love that God has shown me and that he would want me to show. So uh, hopefully I can get someone at the hospital to take care of that paperwork for me and not have to deal with his doctor because his doctor is absolutely refusing. So like I said, I'm not going to even go there and I'm going to try and get it another way. But that may be a problem that you're having now too. Just know that for this period of time, that apparently is normal. <laughs> it's not normal for the way things used to be. Like I know when my mom passed away, her primary care physician signed her certificate and my dad had it within like two weeks. So this should not be a two or three month process. You should be able to complete everything within a couple weeks, but right now we're not. It's another one of the things that's going on with all this nonsense. So if you're having to go through that, I am sorry. Um, I do at least want to mention Gabby. Gabby is, um, she's not as vocal as Charlotte is yet, but she's, she's my other granddaughter for those of you who don't know. But I, she's dealing with this in her own way and she's doing little things that we know is her way of kind of getting past this. Charlotte's very vocal about it and her feelings about her papa. Um, Gabby has been pretending to be papa. Um, she came over the day of the service and one of Brett's older brother was here and she thought it was Brett or she thought he was Brett, his brother Eddie. And she was playing with him like she would her papa. And that was, while we all were very grateful that she had that experience, it was so hard and it's still so hard. So now I'm going to tell you a funny story about Charlotte. <laughs> Got to get off this. I told y'all about tears in the video about Brett. Was it his favorite thing? Charlotte came over about two weeks after his service and she wanted to come inside because she always likes to come in and play. She has a toy room here that her and Gabby play in. And we were walking up to the house and she asked if Gabby was here. And I said, no, baby, not today. And she asked about... Um, Alexandria, my daughter who's helping us, I've been calling her Alex, and I'm going to out her here. Her name, or what we call her, is actually Bibi. She was, when she was born, her oldest sister was two, and then her next sister was one, and a one-year-old and a two-year-old cannot say Alexandria, so her name was Bibi. They couldn't even say baby. <laughs> So she's been baby or BB ever since, and she's now in her 30s. So she asked if BB was here, and I said, nope. And she asked about a couple other people, and I said, nope, baby, it's just Granny here. And she looked, stopped walking, and she looked up at me, and she said, you mean you live here all by yourself now? And I said, yep, baby, it's just Granny's house now. And she said, don't worry, Granny, I will find you a new old man. <laughs> But she changed her mind about that real, real quick when Samantha said, what if he's nothing like Paw Paw? She got this real concerned look on her face, and that was the last we heard about that. But that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, of course, I've been working on this enormous list and trying to finish taking care of Brett, which should have been done, and in normal times it would have been. 
and I have been reading all your cards and messages and emails and things like that and kind of trying to do some of the normal things that I would normally do. Uh, this is all the cards and gifts um, that have come so far. Several of y'all um, have sent stamps and some of you have sent checks and you have um, sent some cash and you have made some um, donations online and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate all of that. And I want to let you know that I will make sure that is, that goes where I said it would go. And if you specify something different for some of that, I will make sure it goes to that specific thing. Um, and I, more than anything else, that is an affirmation that I'm supposed to be here and I'm supposed to continue doing this. And I do want to again say to you, please don't feel obligated to do that. Um, the Lord is providing for me, and um, I did take care of Brett. I've covered all of his expenses. Now it's just a matter of finishing up paperwork. Um, we have been blessed, and I feel so very fortunate because I know that I'm in a far better position than most people who find themselves in my situation. Now I know there are people who inherit great deals of money or have made great deals of money and and I'm not in that position by any means but I'm not in a position where I have to worry and I'm not in a position where I'm about to lose my home or anything like that and I don't want y'all to feel like that you have to help me because I'm in that position um, I appreciate it I will use it it is a blessing from God and every blessing from God I am truly grateful for and I'm grateful for that but it and it just it it just it really it brings me a great deal of joy and peace to know that I think I am where God wants me to be. Um, I don't know why He took Brett so soon, but I'll figure that out. <laughs> but I'm still here, and we are going to continue this because the kids are helping, which is great. Um, if you are wondering if I've gotten your card or letter, in the description of every video, I have posted all the cards and letters and gifts um, that I have received that week. Or like um, on the video that I did about Brett, it has everything that had come up to that point. And then in the next video, again, I put lists of all the cards and letters and gifts that had come. And in the next video, the same thing. And in this video, I think these are what I have right now. I have not been to the mailbox in a few days. So if I go to the mailbox, I will check it today and I will include those cards and letters. But this is quite a few more that have come since the last video. The last time I went, there were 45 cards in the post office box. And then I had this here. And I have to tell you all this story too. Um, I got... I was opening all the cards and Charlotte was here. Um, unfortunately, her daddy had lost an uncle and they did not want to take her to another memorial service because she was terrified that we were going to die, that I was going to, or her mommy or her daddy or one of her aunts after Brett's service and they didn't want her to go to that again. I mean, when you're seven, that stuff can get scary. So. I was opening the cards and she asked why I got so many cards and I told her because people wanted um, me to know that they were praying for me and that they were sorry about Papa. and I said these cards are for you too and I said people are praying for you too because a great many of you have said Becky and family and some of you have even sent a separate card for the children and she said and she, you have to keep in mind Charlotte is her she has more of her pawpaw in her, I think, than any of us do. And she said, why? I am not sad. And she said it all stern because he would do that too. Rather than show sadness, he would get a little angry. And she does that. It's, I mean, if she breaks down in tears, she, she's already gone way too far. It's beyond sad. But she said, why? I am not sad. 
And I said, well, I know, baby, but they know that you miss Papa, and that's why they're praying for you. And, you know, she, t she took that, and that was okay. she was okay with that. But then I opened the box, um, and this came from Deborah, and I was taking stuff out of it, and we hadn't had dinner yet. And I got to this box of uh, chocolate Buckeyes down here, and <laughs> she saw them, and you have to look at this box. I mean, these just look absolutely delicious. And she said, now that is how you make somebody feel better. She's got no front teeth at all right now. So teas just don't happen. And she said, can I have one? And I said, of course you can have one there for you too. So she actually ate two, but before the second one, I made her tell me what she wanted for dinner. And then she did eat dinner after two of these, and they're pretty big. So I have to thank Deborah for that because it really made her day. And... She ate dinner after two. Um, and I have stuff over here from Vanessa. Um, I got a beautiful large print Bible. I think I might have shown this already. Um, and I got a... Which is good because I still haven't been to the eye doctor. That's on my list. Um, and I can't read your name. I, th I think it's Kendra. I can't see it. But I love this Bible, and like I said, it's a good thing because I still haven't been to the eye doctor, and I am going. At this point, though, I think it's just because I'm 53. I don't think there's anything seriously wrong. Um, and Vanessa sent a whole big box of stuff, Vanessa and Larry. And this actually came from um, Alex's husband, Andrew. He went shopping, and he saw this, and he said, you got to find somewhere to put that. He said, because that's how the world thinks that all of us hillbillies eat, and it was pretty cute. Um, so I'm going to have to redo some things before I can actually put it up, but I wanted you to see it. It's like a restaurant sign for a hillbilly restaurant, and it says uh, creamed possum with sweet potato garnished coon fat gravy. <laughs> but it's cute and you have to laugh and Andrew has been trying to make me laugh quite a bit which I appreciate um, he was the one who was bringing stuff when uh, Brett and I were both sick which was a godsend um, he is threatening to open up a, an auction on eBay and start coming and taking stuff out of the house and selling hillbilly kitchen souvenirs online <laughs> stuff that I actually used so if you see a hillbilly kitchen auction online somebody let me know because it's stuff Andrew's taken <laughs> but for right now you know I don't really know what else I can say um, what more uh, advice I can give you just take it one day at a time you're going to do some stuff that other people might consider to be a little bit crazy um, I guess the craziest stuff thing that I did is we had talked for years about putting a sidecar on our motorcycle because Brett was having trouble riding it and that turned into a mission because he told me not to let that motorcycle sit in the basement and not to give up riding because Samantha and David do ride he said get them back out because they haven't been out much he said put a sidecar on it find somebody to ride with and ride well, he was supposed to have done that, one of many things he was supposed to have done. <laughs> and that kind of turned into a mission, which was a nice distraction. So I have a sidecar ordered, <laughs> but I don't have my furnace installed yet, which is another one of the things on the list. And winter's very close, and I haven't winterized any of our stuff outside yet, so all that stuff has to be done. So I had a lot more important things to do, but, you know, when you're in this situation, there are going to be things like that that you just feel like you need to take care of. And if you feel like you need to take care of it, don't worry about what other people think. You take care of it. Um, for me, somehow, doing that, it helped. So whatever helps, do it. And if it's too painful, put it off until tomorrow. Because 
in this situation, there's a lot of things that you can put off until tomorrow. The to-do list I have, I've had to prioritize it. And now I'm dividing it up into stuff that has to be done today, stuff that has to be done this week, stuff that can be done next week, stuff that has to be done before winter, and stuff that can wait until next year. So a lot of stuff is waiting until next year because it's just more that I can handle right now. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us. Like I said, if this video doesn't pertain to you, we're going to do different things on Tuesday Talk. I'm probably not going to talk about this anymore or not much more. Um, I'm going to get on to some kitchen projects maybe. A lot of people have asked about the pot rack or how I have the things hanging up on the wall or how I have stuff even hanging up on the refrigerator. So we'll talk about some of the DIY kitchen projects you can do maybe to expand the space in the kitchen. Maybe even get into some more in-depth stuff. Talk about food storage. A lot of people have asked about food storage. A lot of people have asked about pantry essentials. What I keep all the time for when I get snowed in or like right now when the grocery store shelves are half empty. So we're going to do stuff like that on Tuesdays, I think. We're not going to continue to talk about death because quite frankly, that's more than I can handle. <laughs> But there's a lot of things that I think we can talk about that will add to the channel and that people will get help from. Maybe get ideas to make life easier. So that's what the rest of Tuesday Talk is going to be about. And if y'all like this and you want to continue to see more of it or just listen to me sit here and talk, then let me know in the comments. And I'm going to say goodbye for now. I want to thank you for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. I want to thank you for all of your prayers, for all of the love and support and kindness you have shown me through this. I really am truly blessed. Um, not just because I have, you know, I'm secure. I am, but I have family near me and I have all of you. And when you know this many people are praying for you and there are literally tens of thousands of comments online and I'm getting to all of those. I promise I'm really having a hard time reading some of them. So I've checked on them and I read a few of them as I can, but I've got to start going back through it and actually replying so that you know I've read them. I do appreciate them. And I am getting to that, and I'm getting to that point where I can do more of that. Um, all of these cards, people took time to pick them out. A lot of people wrote very long notes or letters in them. And that just means so much that people would take that much time out of their life to offer me comfort. And I do appreciate that. And I feel bad when I feel bad because I know how blessed I am. And I know that's ridiculous, but <laughs> I'm going to be okay. Um, and the Hillbilly Kitchen is going to continue and life is going to continue. Like my nanny used to say, life goes on. And it does. And that's basically what happens after death is life goes on. And until Brett and I are together again, life is going to go on. So please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And if you want to make sure you get the notifications, click on the notification bell and go to all notifications. Until next time, remember to put God first.